I wanted to save the planet, but I almost destroyed myself. I have a toddler, but when he was about three months old, I was strolling with him around the city, and I felt hungry, like all the other new moms. I didn't have time or energy to prepare any snacks with me because I was keeping this tiny human alive, but I also didn't allow myself to go in a store and buy something to eat because nothing fit my lifestyle. I felt physically sick, really tired, very emotional, and I had a breakdown in the middle of the street. I called my husband saying that I'm really, really tired and hungry. I was crying and desperately saying that I can't do this anymore. That was the moment I felt I've pushed myself too far, way too far. You're probably wondering, why did this woman forbid herself to eat and what the hell is wrong with her lifestyle that she got herself in a situation like this? So let's take a step back. I gotta tell you probably the most important thing. I'm a zero waste activist. Don't worry, this is not going to be a zero waste pet talk, I promise. This is going to be something way more important. It's about how to avoid the dangers of harming ourselves while trying to achieve the goal that's dear to us. My goal was to look after the environment, and I saw zero waste as one way to do it. Zero waste is a set of principles uh, focused on waste prevention so that nothing goes to landfills. It asks people to rethink the life cycle of resources that we use every day so that uh, we look through the five R's of zero waste. Refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. My zero waste began just right there. Three years ago, when I saw Bea Johnson, the zero waste advocate on the stage of TED, I was so inspired. Uh, it all felt so logical, so easy to do, that my husband and I decided that, that, that we are going to implement these principles in our home as well. I'm a maximalist, so I did it all. I got rid of all of my plastic bags and replaced them with reusable. I promised myself not to buy anything in plastic ever again. And I even threw out the contents of my bin on the floor and forced myself to recy recycle it. I fished out dirty plastic bags. I split into pieces my disposable razors. And I even took off the cotton pieces of the cotton swabs. Hearing all this, Zero waste can feel like a ton, even if you just want to give it a try. You start with a cool, hipster, reusable coffee cup, and you go to your favorite coffee shop and get 10% discount. Then you set up five different recycling containers at your home, but then you end up with a compost bin full of fruit flies. What the heck do I do with fruit flies? And when you feel that your waste game is strong and you're ready to Google on how to make my own toothpaste, you realize that you will be using baking soda for your teeth and your armpits for the rest of your life. Zero waste definitely can feel like you start with just one thing, but you have to carry on doing hundreds of others. And if I can't accomplish all of them, I much rather do nothing. Although even on Wikipedia it says that zero in zero waste is rather a goal than a hard target, I took it very seriously. I not only thrived for, for perfection, but I also asked myself to achieve it. As you might see by now, I've always been this all-or-nothing person with little or no patience at all. I wanted to do everything, I wanted to do it fast, and I wanted to see results right away. During this journey, I've experienced it all. Commitment, pride, activism, success, but also failure, guilt, and shame. 
At the beginning of my journey, I felt that this is the way to go. I will not make any trash for the rest of my life. Even my deathbed will be made of recycled packaging. I felt a huge honor to be part of such a movement. I, um, after all, shared all of my experience and, and yeah, my experience on the blog. I inspired thousands of people and they totally raised my self-esteem and status in the society. But between all of these really good things, um, pride and success mixed with guilt and shame. I felt ashamed that I sometimes didn't have energy or time to prepare lunch and I went to the store to buy cheese and bread to make cheese toast. I felt guilty that I didn't live up to my expectations and the expect expectations of others. And being an activist in such a movement can come with a huge burden. Sometimes I felt being watched in a store and even happened yesterday. <laughs> I feel judgment creeping over my skin when people see me stacking on, on frozen berries and unrecyclable packaging. It has also affected relationship with people. Somehow the conversations flow to trash. I can meet a friend on the street and she says, hi, how are you? And hey, we should catch up. And somewhere in between slides also, sorry, I have this plastic bag. My grandma insisted I take it. Once a friend even hid a plastic bag behind his back because he didn't want me to see it. But the funniest situation probably was when a friend came to visit us. She came with snacks in her own packaging, which we thought, wow, well done. Only then she told us that she bought everything in plastic bags, took it all out, put in reusable glass containers, and hid the plastic bags in her car. It might look funny now, looking back, and it would probably make an amazing story in a dinner party. But I have to say, it hasn't been really funny being in those situations. With such an extreme approach, I have not only risked my mental and physical health. After all, I was uh, starving myself in a city full of food while having cash in my wallet. That's looking like a crazy one to any normal person but it also affected my relationship with people. Somehow there is this distance between me and the others because they see me as this really harsh zero-waste judge. I use this perfectionist, extremist approach, not just in zero waste. I've been living my life like, yeah, like this all the time. I really had problems committing exercising regularly because my aim was always go for five times a week, to the gym, one time at an hour, and um, I couldn't commit to that. It also affected relationship uh, with drawing. No matter how much I desired to draw, I didn't allow myself to do that because I'm not Leonardo da Vinci, and it's just better that we don't even start. At some point, I struggled with perfection and zero waste, and I had a huge temptation to quit. But I still cared for the environment. I, I wanted to see and find ways how to adjust the movement to my lifestyle. And I found a way how to look at the waste in a more humane way. I believe we can put it on a scale. On one end, there's this utopian zero-waste activist who's uh, perfect, who's living off-grid, and he uh, provides everything for himself. On the other end, there is uh, this person who's not thinking about trash at all, who's not thinking about plastic uh, bags, who's throwing maybe gum on the street, and sometimes goes, brings his trash to the forest. You probably see where I'm going with this, but yes, there's a huge space in between both of those extremes. You buy a reusable water bottle and uh, don't reach for disposable ones, you move towards one end. You put your garbage in one, pack, uh, in one bag without sorting it, you move towards the other end. I believe that it is completely normal that we move in this scale because we are human beings. For instance, zero waste in summer is so easier to do than in winter, especially if you live way up north as we do in Latvia. On summers, I go to the farmer's market, put my package-free kale in a tote and walk like a queen. In winters, well, the scene is a bit different. 
I feel like going to the store in late hours, hiding my plastic wrapped kale under my veggies. Sometimes it is easy to do zero waste, but sometimes it just isn't. I've met a lot of people from Zero Waste community, and my observation is that the ones who have this healthy attitude towards waste creation are the ones who keep going, even years after years. I have two friends, and they are true zero waste advocates, and both of them do something that is not zero waste at all. One owns a zero waste store, so that's a big deal, right? And uh, she's a mom of three. And for her, for her third baby, she's using disposable regular diapers because washing cloth diapers at the moment is not her first priority. The other one manages a zero waste store and she buys some mascara and lipstick in plastic packaging. Why? Because there are times when this extra black mascara and really nice red lipstick gives her extra boost of confidence. They both do their best in the situations they are they have found the ways that work for them while not driving themselves crazy. Although the world is not as clean as I thought it would be, and I'm not as perfect as I want it to be, I even ask myself sometimes whether it's worth to keep going with this zero waste thing. But then I took a step back and I noticed something. By practicing less waste strategy, my husband and I have significantly changed the way we use our three resources, time, energy, and money. I no longer go for strolls in supermarkets, and I used to do that. I actually shop much less. Therefore, I have more quality time for my friends and family, uh, going for nature walks, or sometimes just being lazy on the couch and watching Netflix. I use less energy fighting with my husband. We used to fight about what we need to buy, when we're going to do that, who's going to do that, and where the heck we're going to get the money. And I'm really glad to say that we no longer do that. And most definitely, we use less money on stuff that we don't need or don't like. Instead, we use the money for the fun stuff. Like last winter, we went to Mexico th uh, for three months. And I really believe that it is just because we, use, uh, we, we don't waste our money on useless stuff anymore. If I look back, I wouldn't change a lot. I just wish I had been kinder to myself. I would definitely go easier on myself and just get myself fed, even if that meant I have to buy something in plastic packaging. I would take step by step, steady and slowly. Although the perfectionist is not dead in me, I've learned that this healthy attitude towards uh, achieving goals is not working just in zero waste. It has been working in other areas in my life too. By using this approach, I've been exercising regularly. If I did it the old way, I would, uh, uh, I would exercise for two weeks extensively and then done nothing for months. If I counted together, that would be about 10 hours in the last six months. Now I exercise 15 minutes um, every day, almost every day, and if I count it together, those are 30 hours in the six months. I know that 30 hours in six months don't sound like a big bunch. For my perfectionist as well, it doesn't sound so good but it is still three times more than it would be with my previous attempts. Moreover, I've picked up sketching lessons. I'm still not Leonardo da Vinci, don't get me wrong, but I'm okay with that. I draw every week, I'm doing something that I thought I'm really bad at, and I'm making steady, steady progress. And that's a really, really big change in my life. I don't know if environmental issues is something that bothers you, but I suspect that there is something that you care about and want to achieve someday. Maybe you even tried, went all the way in as your perfect perfectionist, didn't succeed and quit. There is this Latvian old proverb which says, the slower you go, the further you'll get. Like the story about the turtle and the hare where the slow and steady wins the race. I have to say that only now I start to grasp and understand the true meaning of the, of the saying. I remind myself, the slower I go, the slower... I, uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, the slower I go, the slower I get. But this, <laughs> this, this is not the saying. The saying is, the slower I go, the further I'll get. I don't know what your dream is about but I believe that it matters that you don't give up on it. 
At least not because you also have your inner perfectionist who sometimes kidnaps your reasonable mind and strangles your brave heart. Whatever you desire, my invitation is to give a try to this old Latvian proverb. The slower you go, the further you'll get. Thank you. Thank you.